and I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of who SCDRP is today. Our membership has evolved over time, so it's kind of interesting to look at who we are today. And then um, I'm also going to introduce to you our new membership model. We've changed it a little bit this year. And Lindy um, is going to, she's our chair, and I'll introduce her shortly. Lindy's going to talk about um, our, introduce our advisory board, and then also um, our new advisory board members. And I will um, pass the mic, Lindy will pass the mic over to Josephine, who will um, go through opportunities for new members, our committees, and talk about what we do between these annual meetings, which is our virtual monthly uh, partnership meetings. And then I'm going to share my vision for 2023. And then um, we'll have a little bit of an open discussion. Um, so first of all, introductions. So I think I've met uh, many of you by now. If, if I haven't, please come find me, shake my hand. Uh, my name's Heather McCarthy. I'm the executive director of SCDRP. I'd like to introduce Josephine Justin over here. Uh, she's our uh, program coordinator, and she's been doing so much behind the scenes, and I appreciate that. Uh, our chair of our advisory board is Lindy Betzel over here in the back, and our vice chair, John Phillips Borton, over here. And um, you'll be hearing from Lindy a little bit, a little bit more. So first, let's start with an overview of who SCDRP is today. I'll talk about how we've grown over the last few years and how diverse, how diverse we are. So first things first, uh, this is a graph of where, we, where we're coming from. So as you can see, we're growing, and it is my goal to continue that growth. We've been conducting a membership drive since August. It's been very successful. Uh, during the membership drive, we've essentially doubled, exactly doubled our membership. And you can see annual, there's a, there's a lot of interest around annual meetings. Um, and our membership tends to, of course, go up during that time. So in advance of this annual meeting in Miami, we've had our, our largest growth yet. So who are we? So I'm just going to show you a, flu a few slides of where our current members work. And we have quite a diverse group. And I need to add a lot more logos to these slides. So over, over the past decade, so we've been around for a while, SCDRP has evolved into the largest cross-sector regional forum for resilience professionals from the public, private, academic, and non-governmental sectors in these fields in the region. So here's a few more you can see. We have representatives from small towns and cities um, to large universities, consulting firms, um, counties, so quite diverse. C grants, we have um, usually a few representatives from each state C grant programs. And um, Puerto Rico, we have quite a few here this year. And um, this is quite a diverse group, and I certainly, I'm interested to take a look at who we can add. So this is, um, this is our profile. Um, this is different than the graph you saw yesterday. So if you were here yesterday morning, the pie chart I put up was who's here at the annual meeting. This is who's a member in good standing. So it's very similar. Um, mostly academic, followed by private industry. Uh, the next sector is from uh, nonprofits, and then we go federal government. There's a number of federal government representatives here at the annual meeting, and a smaller uh, group from local governments and from state governments. So it's a goal of ours to keep the diversity um, equal. There's certain sectors that um, we would like to have more representation here. Um, so this is by state, so kind of interesting to see geographically where we come from. Um, mostly Florida, interestingly, uh, followed by South Carolina, then North Carolina and Georgia. And then we have contingent, small, smaller contingents from U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. And then we seem to be attracting members uh, from other states, 
far north and far west who do work here in the southeast or Caribbean. So if we look at this and we, we assume that annual meetings drive membership, then this graph would suggest that we should hold our next annual meeting in Georgia. How's that sound? <laughs> I know. Okay, so we introduced a new membership model um, this year, and um, you can take a look. We have um, three different, four different levels. We have the individual membership, which is just $100 a year, and then we have our supporting partners, sustaining partners, and uh, benefactors. These higher levels are part donation, so 1,000 to the next, the next level is 2,500, and then our benefactor group members are 5,000. With each of those levels, you get uh, a number of individual memberships, so the benefactors get uh, four memberships, the sustaining partners get three individual memberships, and the supporting partners um, get two. And um, you can see I'd like to, to thank those um, that are our uh, group members. We have Socorro, we have um, the Indian River Lagoon National Estuary Program, and our sustaining partners right now are NOAA, Sakart, and Georgia um, Coastal um, Resources Division. Our supporting partners are Miami-Dade County, Martin County, um, FIU, and IBTS. So we thank you very much for that. And now to talk about leadership opportunities within SCDRP, it is my pleasure to introduce the chair of the SCDRP Advisory Board, Lindy Betzel. And I wanna take a moment to recognize Lindy for her enduring and deep commitment to SCDRP. So Lindy has been with SCDRP since its infancy, and she continues to share her institutional knowledge and experience with all of us. So her value to this organization is tremendous, and she diligently keeps us focused on our mission and future possibilities. I meet with Lindy several times a week. <laughs> we know each other virtually very well, and uh, she's an amazing mentor, and I respect her a great deal. Thank you, Lindy, for all that you do for SCDRP. Thank you, and it's wonderful to be able to continue our uh, relationship in 3D as well, so um, off the virtual screen and in real life. Um, I'd like to take a moment to recognize Heather for her amazing leadership of SCDRP since taking over uh, for the partnership just a mere six months ago. She hit the ground running and has just been a stellar leader and innovator and helped us um, take a fresh look at a lot of our processes and models and really um, gave new life to many bits and pieces and has really helped to uh, bring the partnership along in many positive ways. Um, I'd also like to recognize Josephine Justin who has also been with us for about six months and she has been um, absolutely revolutionary in our social media uh, impact and um, has so many great ideas and has um, taken initiative and followed through on so many exciting uh, opportunities for SCDRP. So um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to them for just being incredible SCDRP staff members and we thank them very much for their service. And putting together a darn great meeting, yes. Talk about tireless. Um, I know I've gotten emails at four o'clock in the morning from Heather recently, so I know that she's working hard at all hours of the day. Um, and obviously, we had a wonderfully successful day one meeting, and uh, looking forward to an another excellent day on day two. So um, thanks very much for all your efforts there. Both of you have worked so tirelessly on that front. Um, so, I get the honor of introducing our advisory board. 
Um, if you are an, uh, on the advisory board, I'd love for you to, uh, to stand up. Um, this is the list and you can read for yourself. As Heather said, I'm the chair and John is the, uh, the vice chair. And yes, go ahead, stand up, yep, thank you. <laughs> so a little bit about our advisory board. We, um, we meet monthly and we have ambitious agendas where we um, click through uh, um, important aspects of the partnership, including funding development, partnership development, governance, um, long-term goals, strategic planning, and really there's a lot going on behind the scenes than just um, than putting on uh, monthly meetings and this fantastic annual event as well. So uh, there's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and the advisory board is really critical to help shape um, with their expertise the vision and future of SCDRP. Speaking of the governance, uh, the governance effort, we adopted new policies and procedures this year. Uh, Rick DeVoe, who's not with us today, is the chair of our governance subcommittee. Uh, he and Deborah and I have worked to um, formulate policies and procedures that help us guide how we operate. Um, SCDRP evolved organically and it, since its inception in 2016 has grown from its infancy to sort of like maybe the um, you know, preteen <laughs> stage. So we are continuing to develop rules and procedures and models to help us be uh, deliberate and fair and um, and further develop our board structure so that we are encouraging uh, diversity across geographies, across sectors, and a diversity of the individuals um, on the board as well. So we are um, excited to uh, welcome new members today of our advisory board. We're uh, excited to see what they can bring to, what perspectives they can bring to the advisory board and help uh, and use those to help shape the, the partnership um, as we move forward. So uh, this is the current board composition. Um, after we took a good hard look at our policies and procedures, we are adding six seats. And as many of you know, because many of you are, um, have voted for these folks, and many of you are the folks who, are, who got nominated. So we are super excited about these new additions to our advisory board. Before I go there, I wanted to also recognize that we have a partnership subcommittee, and Josephine's gonna tell us a little bit about these here in just a moment, uh, which focuses on strategic partner de partnership development, other groups that we want to reach out to, how, what information we want to showcase in our uh, in our monthly meetings, and how to strategically advance the partnership in relation to all the other fantastic efforts that are going on in um, in this resilience and recovery space. We also have a funding development subcommittee that focuses on opportunities for funding, including grants and uh, relationships with. Uh, with funding uh, entities as well. So that helps to strategically keep our, um, our funding juices going so that we can continue to, uh, to operate and bring together the wide um, array of resilience and recovery professionals, both in the virtual space as well as in person for this meeting. This is our first advisory board election, and uh, we are extremely excited to uh, be able to announce these today. But first, I want to thank each and every person who either uh, volunteered, them, nominated themselves, or was nominated by someone else. We feel that each of you can really make a valuable contribution to the advisory board, and um, it was a hard decision for all of us. So um, we do have the results, and I am super excited to share. Um, I want to say that if you were not selected to be on the advisory board this time, there are still leadership opportunities uh, within the committees, which we will be opening up to our broader membership. Uh, um, currently, those committees have just been composed of the advisory board members, but we want to uh, develop a shared leadership model where we bring in members of our, um, of our uh, membership to 
increase our representation and a diversity of perspectives on those committees. So um, plenty of opportunity in the future to, to remain engaged. So election results uh, for South Carolina, I would like to um, recognize Amanda Guthrie from South Carolina Sea Grant as our first, uh, as our, our first board member. Uh, for, for Georgia, we have Kate Morano running unopposed for Georgia Tech, and for Florida, Jeremy Stalker from Jacksonville University, both running unopposed as well. Very excited to have them on the board. Um, for the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Hillary Lohman is our new advisory board member. Would you like to stand up, Hillary? I don't think Amanda's here, right? Amanda's not here. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, I thought so. That's great. But please let her know. We are super excited, and we will let her know also. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Susan. That's great. Very thrilled. Uh, it was a it was a lot of um, there was a lot of competition for all of those that had uh, multiple um, multiple entries. So, um, and I'm excited here to congratulate Ashley Ward. If you can stand up, Ashley, our new um, nonprofit representative. Thank you so much. And then for local government, we're excited to welcome Randall Matthews from the Chatham Emergency Management Agency. Um, he couldn't be here due to a conflict as well, so very exciting. Oh, I just pressed the wrong button. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Josephine um, for opportunities for members. Thank you so much, Josephine. Hi, good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure getting to know everyone over the last couple of days, and it's been an honor getting to work with SCDRP for the past couple of months as program coordinator, working alongside Heather, Lindy, the advisory board, and also the steering committee members. Now, while we only convene in person once a year, there are also multiple other opportunities as members to get involved, so I'll be sharing a few of those with you. The first one being some of the committees that Lindy was talking about. So right now we have three committees, and these were previously only open for advisory board members, but this year after the annual meeting, we'll be opening them to all members in good standing. And these committees meet either on a monthly or a biweekly basis virtually. And for the government's committee, they are responsible for things like board membership, organizational development, elections, poli uh, policies and procedures, and also investigating in future governance structures. For the partnership committee, they'll be responsible for some of the things Lindy was talking about where they're connecting SCDRP to organizations, they're developing joint efforts and initiatives, and they're also generating suggestions for our SCDRP monthly partnership meeting speakers. In the past, we've had speakers from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, Georgia Sea Grant, the Barbados Meteorological Services, and also the Caribbean Green Technology Center. And these monthly partnership meetings are available online on our Secora YouTube list if you want to go back and watch some of them. And then our last committee is the Development Committee, and they are responsible for soliciting and generating the financial resources to sustain the partnership, which is really important. There's also the opportunity for additional committees to be made. So that was the steering committee we had formed for the annual meeting. And if there are other committees that you have in mind, we would love to hear about it. And we'll be opening up the opportunity for this after the annual meeting. Um, I'll be sending out an email and a follow up about how you can join and when we'll be meeting. And every month we have a virtual partnership meeting. This is the fourth Thursday of every month at 10 a.m. We meet virtually. And for February, we will be introducing the new advisory board members online. And we would also take this opportunity to introduce those already on the board. 
And for March, we'll be having Dr. Ashley Ward and her grad student, Jessica Sheldon, to present their findings on the Miami Duke table that's happening later today and tomorrow. And these are a few of the opportunities we would love for you to get involved with, and we'll definitely be sending up a follow-up after this meeting. You can come up to Heather or I about some of the ideas you have, and I look forward to meeting the rest of you if we haven't gotten a chance to speak yet. And now I'll be handing it back to Heather to talk about the Executive Director's 2023 vision. Fantastic. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have a, from my point of view, we have a big year ahead. We have um, big tasks and uh, big dreams, big goals. As um, Assistant Secretary General Silwyn Hart said yesterday, reach for the stars, and I said, I take your call to action. <laughs> Let's do that. And so we have, um, we have a strategic plan. It was written in 2021. Um, it expires in December 2023, so it's time to start writing the next one. So we will we'll be taking a look uh, very carefully at each of our um, objectives and each of our key strategies to achieve those objectives. So new ad uh, advisory board and new advisory board members, um, we have a lot of work to do ahead of us to revise and um, update the strategic plan. and. There's a lot of momentum built here in Miami, and we need to continue that. Um, absolutely. So these are the objectives that we had in our 2021 strategic plan, and they are just as valid as they were in 2021. Um, we will continue to serve as the primary regional forum for dialogue, networking, and coordination in disaster resilience and recovery among all those groups in the pie chart, the federal, state, municipal, NGO, and private industry sectors, and within the Southeast and the Caribbean. Objective two, continue to build capacity through increasing the development, sharing, and use of best practices to enhance community resilience. And objective three, continue to cultivate the resources and build the operational capacity to implement our mission, mission and ensure that our vision is achieved and sustained. So we will, we will spend the next year, we've got till December, to write the new strategic plan and we'll be working with our advisory board members and our new members to do just that. And um, we hope to activate the new plan next January. So when I see you next year, um, we will have some new goals and objectives. And, and we can talk about what, what we want those to be. We started the conversation with some meetings on Monday, and we'll continue that. Um, how, you know, to what extent do we want to work on a regional plan? How, how, to what extent can the states work together? Um, and I'd like to pursue that, and we will continue to. So this is, um, this is where I'd like to open up the floor a little bit. Um, you, I would like to hear from you. So you guys, uh, for new members, you've gotten a little bit of a taste of who we are and you've heard from us where we want to go from here. And I would like you as members to, to share your thoughts and goals for 2023 for SCDRP. Like how can SCDRP serve your sector? Um, do we want to start working on a regional resilience plan? Is that a goal that we can achieve? How, what's the timeline for that? How can SCDRP better serve the communities that are in your region? So we want to hear from you and your regions and your towns and your cities and your counties. What do they need? How can a regional organization like this help them? represents the interest of uh, disaster survivors or just people that are facing chronic challenges in their lives. And, you know, it seems like, and, and I think we're, we're doing a lot of good work, but I think that's a really important topic for us to explore. In essence, so for example, whether it's on the board or whether it's uh, in our sessions, 
how do we bring disaster survivors to, the, to this meeting? How do we bring in more community-based organizations that are deeply embedded and live in these communities and work with those that are trying to become more resilient on a regular basis? I think that could, that could further strengthen the group that we've already got. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, one of the things that I think for us, um, and I've been able to really have some great conversations here already this week about this, is you know how do we finance and fund resilience, which is a critical question and um, something that I think we will continue to really dig deep into. Um, the other is, you know, of course, for my, my own work is to how to elevate heat um, to the hazard that it is. There are a lot of challenges with respect to how we classify what is a hazard and what isn't. And, um, you know, for many reasons, heat typically isn't one of the uh, items on the list, however, with a lot of impacts nev nevertheless. So those are two kind of areas that I think we're going to definitely move forward with. Yeah, thank you. I feel like over the last few days, we've had a lot of discussions of what's the definition of resilience? What's the definition of a hazard? What's the continuum? And it would be nice if, as a group, we could formalize what we think the definitions are. It's tough, right? Um, and to move forward. But it's, it's a baseline that we need. Thanks. Monday. One thing I wanted to bring up in this forum is we've been toying with the idea of some sort of sub-regional groups. Um, if there could be like a, uh, in-person meetings on a smaller scale, workshops, uh, multi-state or territory. Um, so I'd love to hear thoughts on uses, focus, topics. We, uh, we kind of brainstormed a little bit and thought that we could convene these either by region or by topic. Um, but I just wanted to hear from y'all on um, maybe some of the, the applications in your area that you think would be good fodder for conversation. John, I think you've got a mic. But I don't have an answer to Lindy's okay. question. Oh, does anybody want to respond to Lindy first before we move on? So I think Julie Shaw, you would with Smart Home America. Um, I think that's an excellent idea because it actually brings the knowledge and the resources to that local level, which is what we're all trying to influence. I think my um, my ask of this group, and, and this group has been forward thinking in this without duplication of efforts, right? That gets on all of our nerves. Um, especially when you start looking at the regional or the smaller groups somebody do a really deep dive into what groups are already on the ground and what are at the state level, the regional level, and the local level, because you only have so many people that are ever motivated, right, to come sit at the table. And if you're competing with local or regional groups, then you're competing and taking away those memberships. And, and just like the mayor kept saying, right, like they have this big plan, but you popped up, right, which was a great resource for them to hold this very successful meeting. I would do, and, and you've got enough members that we can help research those groups with you. Um, like I'm in 23 states, right? So, and, and we work at that grassroots and state level all the time. So we're constantly seeing what nonprofits are working in resiliency, what groups are, what, what committees are doing what. And then I would say, and we do this a lot because we're a small group. So what groups are there and where can you infuse that resilience knowledge in so that they just take it on that everyday level? Um, so I, I think my, that's a great idea. And, it, and you have to do that. If you're really going to impact, you have to have those smaller groups working in the everyday. Um, but I would also ask that you do a deep dive and find out what's going on already. See if you can tag on to that or just infuse what you need to put into that group. Because none of us all live everywhere, right? And you need that local phone number. That's my thing. There has to be a local phone number that citizens can call and get that answer because they're not going to call you. I love this idea. Um, one thing, there's another advisory board that I serve on, and one of the things that we've done recently that I think has been very helpful is we 
have formed smaller groups to tackle specific topics, like for that one, for example, procurement, which is actually something not exciting to most people, but actually really does stymie a lot of progress and, you know, what, how we can, you know, um, create sort of guidelines or recommendations about procurement practices that actually effectively move money and projects through. So I think it would be helpful if we maybe, I mean, I know geographically is one way, but if we also thought about it topically so that you get people throughout the um, organization that have sort of expertise on this and can kind of uh, aggregate some recommendations about how to do some of the things that we're all trying to do. I like the idea of smaller working groups on topics and maybe those would even lead to regional or smaller meetings and things like that. Thanks. John? Rick? I think it's on you. Okay. I'm going to take it in a different direction. Uh, just reflecting on three things that I felt like I heard a lot yesterday and last night and just in conversation. One is we clearly talked about or yesterday represented the regional presence, but how do we really kind of make the connection, uh, the, the important connection between the Caribbean and the states? And so really showing that there are within this broad topic of vulnerability, disaster, resilience, uh, that there are strong linkages. And how do we do that not just when we're all together in Miami? So kind of as an annual objective. The other was uh, having good conversations yesterday about uh, the kind of practice of emergency management and emergency managers in the region. I think of three years ago when we had this event in Jacksonville, there were a lot of emergency managers there. And uh, I don't think for any particular reason, uh, there are less here now. And so how do we bring back that really tactical presence on topic with the broader uh, discussion on, on these issues. And then the third one was just, I heard wonderful things about the event yesterday and a lot of asks about like what next. And so what is, what does SCDRP do as like follow up from its annual meeting to kind of uh, either continue some of the discussions or share back? Um, and so I think that's a good question for us to think about is how do we make use of these meetings um, so that they are both amazing one-off events, but also something continues from them. Anybody on this room want the microphone for a moment? I didn't want to. May I say a few things? Because you're walking towards him, both the mic's in my hand now. <laughs> Who's talking? Thank you. Oh, Me. You <laughs> Sorry, I was not trying to hide either. Um, no, you're good. Good morning, everybody. So I think it will be, I have every faith in this group to do it, but I think it will, and I feel like this is what I'm hearing going through this, is it will also be important to be organized and intentional about what different, what we have in common and how we can help each other and what is just different, but people are really, really responsible for getting done and therefore like what are the boundaries between like what we do have in common and what we can do for each other and where we have to keep going and do like it where we don't have things in common one if that wasn't but one thing that I then to a lot of other points about what can we do together in small groups and being together in person um, thank you so much for organizing the field trip that yeah. full transparency I asked for <laughs> Um, and we had a great time, and I think that something that came out there was people from different places went to a place, and like being somewhere allowed everyone to weigh in on how it goes, where they're from, and what seeing, what seeing in a different place, what they wanted to talk about. Like we got into we got into design stuff, we got into funding stuff, and that was like a very very awesome way to get to, to do what I just said, which is like stay organized and intentional about like what we have in common and what's just remarkably different, but super important in order for us to move the needle where we are at. Um, and so field trips, I just, I feel like that's a, on a few points. Field trips, I think, were a great way for everyone to find the words and the topics and the themes that were gonna be through lines and to engage with people from other places about it. Um, and I think that that will be as, whether it's disaster resilience, 
like and, and staying organized, perhaps breaking into intentional groups so that there is a lot for a lot of people, but for people with a focused interest, it's it's still meaningful and not almost too broad for for them to sink their teeth into. Thanks. Thank you, Hillary. Um, and and I take that I take that to task. I do. I'm I am bummed that I had to miss the field trip to organize other meetings. It sounds like it was phenomenal. So I'm I'm. I'm happy for those of you that were there. And we'll try to do uh, more of that in the future, certainly tack on more field trips <clears throat> to our annual meetings. And because I, I know that, exper that shared experience means a lot to those that are there. I think I, wanna <clears throat> I think I want to wrap up unless anyone has another burning comment. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'm from the Bahamas. and. Um, I'm going to ask for your apology in advance because I got in late and I'm not too sure what has transpired. But I think the meeting was wonderful. I just heard of the partnership when an invitation was extended to uh, emergency management agency. And in the Caribbean, basically all of the countries have such an agency. And I think from my experience here in the exchange, if other uh, emergency risk management agencies could benefit, because we, for example, have our meetings. So I'm wondering how to further engage them, how, I don't know if you're familiar with the, well, yes, yeah, it, it, it was shared here, the Caribbean Emergency Response Agency, and we all members of that. So if this information could be shared and people encouraged to become members, to participate, I think it will go a long way because we share the same challenges and the exchange of information. And for us in the Bahamas, Florida is our second home <laughs> almost. So we have the interest. So I don't know. I don't know what's in the thoughts of um, people's mind, but how to engage others, how to deepen and further the partnership, and I, I think you'll have a lot of persons who are interested. Now, the other thing is, uh, so this is a group of practitioners. This is not a certification, professional certification thing, right? This is a group of, right. So, and membership doesn't depend on academics or, but basically, whether or not you're interested. Anyone who shares our vision and mission. Right, okay. So I just want to make that clear. But I, I think from where I sit, I will do my part to spread the information. I'll be in touch with you, make sure I'm sharing the right information. And, um, and then throughout the year, you have your meetings and so forth and so on. I indicated to um, uh, her earlier today, one of the challenges that we have in the Bahamas following most of the hurricanes, but particularly since Hurricane Dorian, was debris management. It's a big, 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 big problem. And if I could <laughs> network with some persons, I, I mean. Especially in the islands. And, uh, in the islands, yes. In the islands, the same thing. Right. So, you know, exchanging ideas, being in touch with professionals who know how to deal with this, that, that's key. And of course, the. Um, panel discussion yesterday on housing, before, during, and after, we still have a housing challenge. Uh, it's a big problem. So those are my thoughts. Again, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. So I have a suggestion, thank you. Josephine. Um, maybe, Josephine, that, the, that a survey could go out to the membership so that you could sort of bubble up what the bigger needs are of the membership for collaboration. Like, what are some, I mean, you make a good point. Like, what are. Right. So, like, if that's a big need of the, of the members that serve the communities that struggle with that, what, who of the membership would be willing to get into a conversation, right? You could do a Zoom conversation, and, and that could be a working group on something. So, what are the needs of the membership? from their local area, maybe, you know, just 
a survey monkey type survey of what are the needs and then see what the needs bubble up to and then see of all of us who wants to sit on a smaller working group. Thank you for the feedback. We have planned a survey and it'll take a look at the annual meeting and how that experience was. But like you were saying, it's really important to consider the future of SCDRP and moving forward, what we're doing. So I did my best to include a few short response questions at the end where you can provide feedback, not just about the annual meeting, but also as a whole, the partnership and what you would like to see out of it. Um, if a specific question doesn't address that, definitely still feel free to include it. You can also email me or Heather, and we would love to further that conversation and also have that in writing. Um, and we'll also take that feedback and consideration and share that with the partnership and what we've learned from the experience and what we can do moving forward, not just for next year's annual meeting, but for our monthly partnership meetings, our committee, and the future activities we're involved in. But thank you for the feedback. It's helpful. Yeah, fantastic. So that survey will be in your email inbox at 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Josephine's posted it ready to go. Um, so we have, we have one minute before the next session starts. So I just want to take um, uh, a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. Uh, I, I just wanted to make a comment. I think the, the SCDRP had its genesis in private public partnerships, and it seems like some of the p private part of it is waning a little bit, and maybe pay attention to that because I. I really think even like from the academic side that having the, the private sector is important. And just building on this idea with field trips, I mean, it's great to have them during conferences, but another idea, and this just may be a brain fart, but I wonder if we could, you know, find communities or uh, that, that want assistance and sort of put together volunteer teams to go in and do a review of their resilience program or help them solve some resilience issue, that would be a, an extremely valuable service to offer to a community to bring in a, a pi private public team to sort of look at what you're doing and make suggestions. And it would be yeah. a, an activity I think some of, some of us would benefit from as well. So uh, maybe not, not just look at the annual meeting time, but create some activities like that where where you could have some of us involved yeah. in that. I love that. I love that. I think that, and, and that goes along with, with my goal of continuing the interaction, building upon the relationships and the momentum that, that we have here in Miami. I appreciate that. So thank you all. I'm going to, um, I think we're not done talking. So I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I have certainly reach out to me or Josephine. We have uh, much work to do in the coming year. Thank you for your time.